joined now by Dr. Michael Oren, most recently the Israeli ambassador to Washington, now back in Israel and here at the IDC. Michael, thanks for being with us. Good to be with you, Arlene. Now, you were just uh, on a panel today talking about the peace process. Um, obviously, it's kind of off. What are your key recommendations for what Israel should do now? Israel, I think, has to think in terms of taking its own uh, destiny into its hands and to seriously consider uh, action that will enable it to remain a, a Jewish and democratic state, that will preserve its uh, security and our security prerogatives, and to um, answer any unilateral Palestinian move to declare a, a Palestinian state uh, in the UN on the basis of the 67 borders with Israeli borders, uh, which uh, we can defend and which we can send our kids to defend. Now, one of the hot topics right now is the fact that Hamas and Fatah have joined in this unity deal uh, and a unity government. Um, and Israel really expected that the U.S. would stand behind it and say we're not going to deal with that government. And in fact, the Obama administration came out uh, with a slightly different answer. Were you surprised by that? And do you think this harms the U.S.-Israel relationship? Um, I personally was not surprised. Um, I did uh, a, a published a piece of academic research back in 2008, the summer of 2008, about six months before the American election, where I analyzed all of the uh, Middle East and uh, Arab-Israeli positions of then uh, Senator Barack Obama. Uh, and one of the um, conclusions I reached back in 2008 was that if he were elected president, someday he, he could well recognize a uh, Fatah Hamas unity government. So I was not surprised, but I was disappointed. And I think that uh, the United States could have waited and could have set conditions uh, that were more in conformity with the understandings that Israel has had with the United States uh, over the previous years, particularly about the um, willingness slash ability of any unity government to fulfill the three essential quartet conditions, that is recognition of Israel, ending terror, and accepting all previous agreements uh, between the Palestinian Authority and Israel. Hamas has explicitly uh, rejected all three of those conditions uh, as recently as this week. Tell us about life after Washington being back in Israel. I know you're working on a book right now. Can you right. tell us a little bit about it? Well, the book is about my experiences uh, as ambassador. It's about the U.S.-Israel relationship. It's a bit of a memoir going back uh, saying about Israel and what Israel meant to me. Um, it's a very uh, personal journey. I've never written in the first person before as an historian. I always writ, writ, I wrote in the third person. Uh, so it's a challenge, um, but very fulfilling. I was just at a panel, and uh, as a last question about BDS, of course, uh, boycott, divestment sanctions, and whether or not these are a strategic threat to Israel or just a nuisance. What do you think? I think right now they're a nuisance, but they have the potential to become a strategic threat. And it's nothing that we can take uh, lightly or cavalierly, um, and the potential is there. I'm coming you know, from the United States, from their perspective. Uh, there are maybe five campuses now out of 7,000 campuses that have voted for in favor of BDS, uh, so it's an insignificant number, but it's still five more campuses than there were five years ago. Um, so we can't afford uh, to be uh, lackadaisical about it, and we have to take efforts to combat it. Okay, Dr. Michael Oren, thanks for joining us on TLV1. My pleasure, I think.